Do you want me to be directing you while we're being Yeah, interviewed? definitely want you to be directing. So this is all on? This is on, we're live. Yeah, all you gotta right. be careful what you say. It's you, live? Yeah, this is live going around. No. <laughs> <laughs> Turn left. Very good, very good. So we're in the car with Jess Trangove. Turbo I right hear, is this correct? Oh uh, yeah, there's a bit of a joke <laughs> behind that. Yeah. Um, so... They used to call me, what was my original well, name? Well, Wikipedia says Trini, but we know. Uh, so. <laughs> uh, actually, take a left here. Um, this Turbo came from um, the boys out at the group um, being a bit sarcastic about my lack of surge, and so oh, my, right. my nickname was Surge, and Adam ah. said, look, this isn't, this isn't on. We've got to um, you know, get Jess feeling confident in her ability to to you know change pace and get the legs turning over quickly so he yeah. said her new name's turbo, turbo. And it's stuck and you are turbo forever. so in a session when i've got to up the pace it's turbo i want to have a chat uh, firstly about what it was like running down the chute at glasgow knowing you're going to snag a bronze medal yeah well it was unbelievable and i actually on that home straight i hadn't looked behind me so i didn't know what was going on behind me but based on people's cheers i thought i must have had a bit of a gap and just before i turned into the shoot i saw eloise wellings do a big fist pump <laughs> and she was almost crying like the oh. look on her face and that just made me all emotional and then i just i remember thinking in my head this could be a once in a lifetime experience you know um coming into a Commonwealth Games in a medal position so I really just tried to enjoy that final straight without backing off the pace and um, sort of had a look up at the clock because I had no idea of my time and to see it was a PB as yeah. well it just completed 230, it. 2.30.12 is that right? Yeah. yeah and then just to cross the line and actually Cody yelled out something and I, I thought he was saying the finish line's up here so I t put in a little <laughs> search. <laughs> ah. To Click make sure I right actually crossed the line, um, yeah. but he just had an Aussie flag. So to be able to hold that Aussie flag, you know, I yeah. thought that was just something the gold medalists got to do. Oh, so no. I was really pumped. And then, you know, Michael Shelley and having people like Steve Monaghetti there oh, no. um, at the finish, it was. Uh, yeah, we, I tell you what, you, you would have. Yeah, we, I think we saw you at the end. Yeah, yeah, you guys we, had we, a little we, bit of a. I think a, a chant going that was really oh, entertaining man, with a big kangaroo. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. Michael Shelley, you had yeah, Shelley. Yeah, it was just amazing. I mean, it was probably uh, the highlight of the whole games for us. Wasn't yeah. that? It was awesome. Yeah, I remember awesome. seeing the big brew as I turned the corner. Jumpy, yeah. Yeah, Jumpy. Yeah. yeah, he's the man, that's for sure. That's for sure. Uh, and the whole Glasgow experience, how did that stack up compared to other sort of major championships that you've been to? Glasgow is one of my favourite. I yeah. mean, the result obviously was really special and having my um, mum and dad and, and brother there and a lot of friends actually from Adelaide and some really um, close friends I guess who have been a big part of my life had flown over for it too yeah. and they were all scattered around the course so that element was incredible. Um, just, I don't know, Glasgow really turned it on. The weather was great, there was lots of greenery. I love forests and, you know, yeah. green parks and whatnot, and that's exactly what we were running through. So it was, yeah, unreal. And the noise and the crowds, so many people had said to me, oh, you wait, Glasgow is grey and dreary, but make sure you get to Edinburgh, that'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. But I actually loved Glasgow, the city, and um, our Australian team, morale and camaraderie, I guess, was, was unbelievable. Well, and that's interesting. I'd like to know about that because obviously uh, the big blow up before Eric Hollingsworth, mm. um, what that effect that had on the team. Because when we uh, we went to two days at the pre-camping, like Gates said, mm -hmm. and on one day, though everything was fine, the next day everyone was flat really flat and I think that's when sort of the stuff had sort of gone down but your from your perspective how much of an effect did that have on the team or did it actually mind everyone feeling? Yeah I mean we sort of weren't really in the know a lot of the time um, you had to actually look for it on social media or yeah. the internet to find out information so we weren't having big meetings about it or discussing it as such um, you know I think it was probably a big deal back here where people had easy access to the media and it was probably, you know, a big yeah. part of the Australian team's news. Um, 
you know, for everyone back here. But yeah. it was probably actually less so. We were just focusing on our upcoming yeah. competition and noticed that something was going on. But I mean, um, I, I didn't think it fe affected people's ability to prepare. If anything, it just affected their post-race interviews rather than being oh, asked okay, about yeah. their performance yeah. sometimes. They were asked about that, which was a bit upsetting for some people who, um, <laughs> you know, yeah. they put all their energies into this race and they get asked about their head coach after the event. But um, I think AA have done a really good job of, you know, keeping on top of it all the, the months following Glasgow they haven't missed a beat it's all been yep. really um, smooth and and uh, yeah we see some exciting or interesting months ahead with there'll be I think it is I get this sort of feeling athletics is about to rise again you know yeah. I think it's just that there's a bit of an air of confidence starting to develop um, in athletics it's got a long way to go but yeah and there's just good. a few events at the moment where there's really those new you know the new blood coming yeah. through and that's always really exciting when you see someone like Nina just go and yeah burst onto the scene like that last weekend who knows what what that, that's going to lead to next year and um, I think athletics is you know going through a bit of a rise as well which coincides with I think that fun running road race yeah. boom that's going uh, on yeah. as well yeah, that's right. Um, you're so you've gone what top twenty at Worlds. <laughs> you've podiumed at Glasgow. What's next? <laughs> well, I want to get some um, some PBs and uh, just I guess improve my times over some of the shorter distances in I guess the early to mid part of this year. I want to experience a stinted altitude, so I'm heading yeah. up to Flagstaff in Arizona with um, Philo Saunders and. Brunken and the crew. Ah, yes, yeah. <laughs> and um, and then a marathon at the end of the year. I'm really hoping to crack that two hours thirty and um, get a qualifier for, for Rio and, and see what I can do there. So I'm just just setting my sights on Rio at the moment. It was a long term goal and it's becoming shorter term by the week. It's coming up quickly. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Now let's go back, uh, Narakur. Yeah, small country town down there in the limestone coast. Yeah, it's a brilliant part of the world. Yeah, yeah. God's country. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I don't know, everyone seems to have a connection with Narracourt. They've either lived there, they've got a friend or a relative who lives there. It's just yeah, right. uh, it's a special place. Why is, what makes it so special? <laughs> I don't know. Some would say it's a wine region, um, you know, the, the red wines. Some would say, you know, Robe and some of the nice little beach towns nearby. Yep. I love Narracourt for its um, community yeah. feel and its sporting culture. The football and netball culture is unreal. Um, yeah. So you've had like probably four or five like recent AFL players, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Them, yeah. And I think it's just they've. It's, it thrives sort of success because people love, like they've yeah. got a passion for the sport. And once you've seen a few AFL footballers come out of a club, I think young footballers believe in their ability yep. to do that too. So there's been like Lockie Neal who's with Frio and, yep. and uh, Alex Forster and, and Jack. And there's, you know, a whole lot of this one era who yep. have, who have gone on. And um, it's it was really special last year going back to Kaibi Bolight Football Netball Club. and um, doing a talk with Jack and Lockie and, and sort of seeing some of the kids that I guess um, yeah, are now striving for that as well. Well it gives them belief doesn't it like they, they see and go well you know if, if Jess and Jack can go and make it well why can't I? Yeah and I mean they're, they're part of it like before the Olympics in 2012 and before Glasgow I received these emails from um, Ange Donnelly, she's one of the teachers at the uh, Narracourt Primary School. Mrs Donnelly? Mrs Donnelly, who I used to play netball with. Her mum was my first, one of my first netball coaches. Anyway, she sent me these videos of her little receptions and new ones, yeah. singing a song, um, like, hey Geronimo, but they'd change the words around and then... There's only one. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? And, um, yeah, and they all had little messages and I've received letters from Narracourt yeah. Primary and... Those what about a ticker tape parade? Have you have they had that yet? Uh, well, I went back to talk to the um, at their assembly yep. 
at the end of 2012 and that was pretty special not quite a tick tape parade but oh, a lot of my teachers were still there which was really cool classic now narrow court pick up your game get her on the back of a ute and take her through the, the main drag <laughs> and uh give her a massive reception out there <laughs> yeah. uh, so growing up you had you know, obviously your brother Jack as a, a he's become an elite sportsman, your sister Abby was a yep. phenomenal rower as well. Um, what is it about the Trengoves? Why are you so successful in sport? Uh, I think mum and dad have played a huge part in our careers or just in our lives in general as, as any parents do but um, they've always just supported us in whatever we wanted to pursue and they've never you know pushed us but they haven't um, blocked opportunities so I recall uh, one year it would have been year six or so I wanted to go to the Sapsars across country and one of my friends who was going to go her mum was due to take us anyway for whatever reason at the last minute her mum wasn't able to take us to Adelaide and yeah. I was like oh I won't be able to do Sapsars unfortunately that means won't be able to try for nationals and anyway went off to bed a bit sad about that got this wake up at 5 a.m and mum's like i've taken the day off work oh, let's go to adelaide yes. she got me to sapsaza and i got to go to nationals oh wow you know soon after and so i think those little things are just incredible and mum and dad lead healthy lifestyles they're yeah. passionate sports people um i think just that you know narrow court factor as well the the community support yeah. and belief uh, i've had some you know special mentors over the years yep. that's helped and um i don't know the pecking order is it <laughs> as far as your brothers and sister where do you sit well i'm the eldest and then yep. there is abby and then jack but abby's always been a lot well, since the age of about 12 overtook me she's always yep. been sort of taller and um and then jack overtook both of us so yep. The pecking order doesn't line up with height, but um, <laughs> <laughs> there've been a few, yeah, sibling battles in the backyard over basketball and yeah. table tennis and whatnot. It used oh, to be. It's table tennis. I know. Oh, Except Jack, the one time I was actually on par with him because we sort of get it out at Christmas. I was pumped. I was you know, not too far off, and um, and he revealed he'd been playing left-handed the whole time, oh. so he smashes me off the court. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> We could talk all day. We're here. Dylan's over there. I'm sure you probably prefer to go over here. Spend a time with me. But uh, all the best um, in you. the years to come. Look forward to the gold medal at Rio. Uh, Robbo and I will be there cheering you on and uh, everything else in between and beyond there as well. What will your couch look like? Uh, I don't know. It has to be like a Rio. Rio. I don't know. Big forest. It has to be because, you know, they're yeah, yeah, the yeah. Amazon. Yeah. yeah, a big river, I'm not sure. You better start thinking. So, yeah, it's right. Yeah, that. exactly. Excellent. Thanks very much for joining Thank us you. in the car with Mossy. <laughs> See you. Just drink, go. <laughs>